Come and listen Come to the water's edge All you know and fear, Lord Come and listen Come to the water's edge All you thirsty come let me tell you what he has done for me let me tell you what he has done for me he has done for you is done for come and listen come and listen to what he's done come and listen come and listen to what he's done On the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's partake of the bread and the cup together. Ah. Uh -huh. 
Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went over for a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and he went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing.
the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar 
put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. You've heard the songs and the scriptures tell the story of Jesus' journey from Thursday evening Passover meal in the upper room to the night of agonizing prayer in Gethsemane Garden, the all-night trials, and the morning flogging and mock mockery at the Roman Praetorium before the crucifixion at Golgotha. Isaiah's words are striking, describing the whole event from a distance of 700 years away in Isaiah 53, verses 7 through 9. Here's what he said. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as the sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him and cause him to suffer. This was all God's will, and to suffer in a certain way. 
the authorities have been trying to kill Jesus many times. In Bethlehem, Herod sought to destroy the Christ child. In Nazareth, they wanted to push him off a cliff. Twice at the temple, religious leaders picked up stone to stone him, but every time he escaped because it wasn't time. When the set time of his birth fully came, he was born of a woman, and now for his death, Jesus said, my appointed time is near. As Isaiah said, it was God's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. It wasn't a miscarriage of justice, although it was. It was not a mistake of the wrong man at the wrong time, in the wrong place. It was God's will. And that's a message that's hard to believe. During this Holy Week, I've been pondering one question from Isaiah. He said, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away, that is, his arrest, his judgment, the trial, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? His disciples didn't protest, unless you want to count Peter cutting off someone's ear when arresting Jesus, but they had followed him for three years. But at this point, they scattered. They didn't protest. We'd expect the religious leaders who knew the truth of the prophets to protest. But they didn't. They had other motives in mind. We might even expect those that Jesus healed, who were amazed at his teachings. Those who ate multiplied bread, we might expect them to protest. But who did protest his arrest, his judgment, his punishment? I think it'll surprise you who did. Sometime in the middle of Pilate questioning Jesus, his wife sent him a note that said, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. Here was a Roman Gentile wife of the governor, and she was protesting his crucifixion. She knew he was innocent. And then, of course, surprise of all surprises, Pilate himself protested the religious leader's call for crucifixion. He found Jesus innocent, not worthy of death, and did everything he could to release Jesus. The people that we least expected to protest, protested. What would you have done? What would I have done? Would it have made any difference if we had protested? I don't think so. Because it was God's will for him to suffer, to be raised and lifted up, led like a lamb to the slaughter, to make his life an offering for sin, to justify many. If God would have given in to the protest and sent angels to rescue Jesus, we would still be lost in our sins, forever separated from God. Aren't you glad for Good Friday? But there is one other who protests. It's God himself. He doesn't protest his son's suffering or obedience or crucifixion, but he protests our response. He says, I've revealed my arm of salvation to you, so I'm wondering, who has believed my message? The Lord laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brings us peace is on him who has believed God's message. Let's pray together. Our Father, on this Holy Friday, we come before you. We come before you to confess our own unworthiness 
We come to praise you for in your wisdom the weak and the shameful things have become the wise, the elevated, the way to salvation, the way to relationship with you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for your son's obedience. And we thank you for the eternal life that is available to us through his suffering. May we believe his message, your message, with a whole heart and follow you completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who but Jesus loves the sinner? Who but Jesus calls him friend? Reaches out to touch the leper. It's the weary come to him. Who but Jesus? flesh and pain and sorrow, reaping what he did not sow. With the lost he shared salvation, with the thief he shared a cross. All that we might share his riches, who but Christ would give. Jesus. Who but Jesus?